journalist fired from WUTC is suing UTC. Get the details. Students and supporters take to the campus to protest her termination. We also have an inside look on head basketball coach Matt McCall's departure. I'm Michael Snowden. And I'm Kiana Crutcher. Your news starts now. Former WUTC reporter fired for a report she filed earlier this month is now suing UTC for a million dollars. Attorneys for Jackie Helbert filed the suit Thursday in Hamilton County Circuit Court. It names UTC as well as two university officials, George Heddleston and Chuck Cantrell. Heddleston is the Senior Associate Vice Chancellor of Marketing and Communications who fired Helbert. Cantrell is the manager of WUTC. The suit alleges the firing was prompted by a threat from state lawmakers to withhold funding. UTC officials say that threat was never made. This controversy started when Helbert reported on a meeting between members of the Cleveland Gay Straight Student Alliance with state lawmakers. Helbert recorded two meetings where a proposed bathroom bill was discussed. She filed the report, but lawmakers later said they did not know they were being recorded. That report was later deleted from the WUT website, and Helbert was fired last week. That set the stage for this week's protest organized by SAFE, Student Activists for Equality. That march started at Hunter Hall and ended at Founders Hall, where UTC administration is housed. Go and get a fire! Go and get a fire! Go and get a fire! Go Students from the LGBT community in the SAFE organization marched and chanted on campus Wednesday to protest the firing of former WUTC reporter Jackie Helbert. Helbert was reportedly fired from WUTC for not identifying herself as a journalist during a controversial meeting between Cleveland students and state lawmakers over a proposed bathroom bill. UTC officials say Helbert violated NPR ethics and fired her. Yeah, I, I like strongly disagree with the reason for my termination. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just realized I, I talked to a lawyer earlier and I'm not really supposed to say too many details, but I can say that I strongly disagree with my termination. <laughs> More than 30 students marched from Hunter Hall to Founders Hall chanting No justice! No peace! to let the university officials know they will not be silenced. A coach of UTC's SAFE organization, Kayla Harris, said If this can happen to someone who's not even a student, who doesn't pay tuition, who doesn't like, pay to go here, then what could happen to us? What could happen to our rights? Students of the organization say they feel attacked by the lawmakers and UTC officials when they stripped Hilbert of her freedom of speech. When the students arrived at Founders Hall, workers had locked all doors of the building. Individuals of SAFE organization continued to chant and protest outside the building. The students say they will not back down until they hear from UTC officials. All you fascists found to lose. All you fascists found to lose. You're bound to lose. So far, a hearing has not been scheduled on the lawsuit, which demands the reinstatement of Helbert to WUTC. Stay with Mox News for coverage on this controversy. North Carolina lawmakers repealed the state's controversial bathroom bill. It's a movement to end a year of tumult that saw businesses leave and major events canceled. The governor said he wanted a law that added protections for the LGBTQ North Carolinians. The new bill eliminates rules about who can use which restroom, but critics say it still allows for discrimination against transgender people. Big news in sports. The head coach of men's basketball is going to the University of Massachusetts. Michael has more for us. Thank you. The first reports that Matt McCall could leave surfaced earlier this week within a day. It was confirmed that McCall will leave for a five-year deal with UMass. Uh, well, you always want to try to keep good people. Uh, Matt's a great person and a very, uh, very good young coach. And uh, once we were aware of what was going on, Matt was always transparent from the beginning. Um, we knew what we were dealing with because of his honesty. And, um, you know, we tried to do everything we could to keep good people. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, situations uh, just allow themselves to be what they are. 
and, and, and people move on no matter what you can do. Now the search for a new head coach begins. Stay tuned to Mox News for updates. The front of a popular downtown Chattanooga restaurant collapsed this week. Cheeburger Cheeburger collapsed Wednesday afternoon. No one was hurt because the business owners closed the night before when they saw the structure problems in the building, located on Market Street. This is a video of the demolition crew cleaning up the rubble while firefighters sprayed water to keep a dust cloud under control. Good news for UTC students. Tuition increases will be minimal for the third year in a row. UTC President Joe DiPietro says increases will be at a 3% or less because of self-imposed budget restraints. DiPietro will, be present, will present the budget boundaries for the 2017 and 18 fiscal years to board a subcommittee in June. UTC's Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences has become a finalist for the job of president of Eastern New Mexico University. Jeff Elwell and other finalists will be interviewing with students, faculty, and staff, and administrators next week at ENMU campuses. If selected, Elwell will be leaving UTC after this semester. The decision is expected to come by April 17th. Many students use the current deposit function that allows campus points to be deposited on their UTC card. Those points can later be used as money around campus. The website to complete this has changed. Students can now go to get.cboard.com forward slash UTC to refill their campus points. For assistance and more information, email moxcard at utc.edu. A major part of campus has a new look. The renovation for the Tennessee Room is now complete. The room is located in the University Center and now has the feel of a ballroom. The work was done just in time for the meeting of the UT Board of Trustees. The revamp comes complete with new technology featuring large flat screen TVs around the room. Have you seen the new Nintendo Switch? Our Shane Perry takes a closer look at what could be a game changer for the gaming industry. So I recently got to play with the Nintendo Switch and I really enjoy it. Uh, I like the aesthetic of the console. I like the fact that it switches between handheld mode and dock mode really easily and effortlessly. Um, I've heard reports of people scratching their screen very easily, which is totally going to happen because it's plastic. Many people have also mentioned the fact that the left Joy-Con will disconnect at random and it generally causes havoc and hijinks in any of the games you're trying to play. Um, I played a little bit of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Snipper Clips, and Shovel Knight. None of which I noticed any Joy-Con disconnects, or anything wrong with the Joy-Cons, really. Most people say they get about two and a half to three hours while playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and that's, that's pretty poor considering that this is a handheld device, something that they want you to take with you. Not to mention, one of the biggest oversights I've seen with the Switch is the fact that the charging port is on the bottom. Really the only effective way I've found to charge it while playing is to hold it with the Joy-Cons attached and the plug sticking out of the bottom. Weather-wise, Chattanooga is finally heating up. Looks like we're going to be staying in the lower 70s until rain comes back Sunday night. Enjoy the weekend. The Mox Pro Day for NFL Scouts was held at Finley Stadium yesterday. Several teams were in attendance to see some of the players perform and show their skills. Several UTC football players, including Keontae Davis and Xavier Borishadi, tried out at yesterday's Pro Day. Few of the UTC mocks are expected to go into the NFL draft, including Keontae Davis, who is the highest rated prospect and is the third round possible choice. I caught up with him here in this interview to see how he was feeling about going into this NFL draft. Uh, how good does it feel, uh, you know, getting to represent Chattanooga as the main guy here at the, uh, the Pro Day? That's great, man. You know, born and raised here. So anytime I come out here and uh, show all the people, my supporters, my teachers and things like that, anytime I can go out here and, and show them that, you know, all the work they put into me is uh, paying off, you know, it's always great. A new bill passed saying that the Internet service providers can sell your Internet usage and data. Providers like AT&T and Verizon can sell your browsing history and app data usage. A marketer purchases the data to find out how best to advertise to you, like the way you see ads on Facebook. If you're worried about your privacy, you can use what's called a VPN or virtual private network to mask your online activities. 
The beginning of Monday was CAB Kickoff Week. CAB is a student-led activities board that plans a week of full of fun activities free for students at UTC. CAB is committed to enhancing the collegiate experience through on-campus events open to all students. They are sponsoring these events to create unity among the campus by inviting musicians, comedians, and more to encourage students to come out and be more active with said activities. Starting the week, CAB has kicked off in Heritage Plaza by giving away free food, t-shirts, and more along with Scrappy the mascot. They continued these events with a concert Tuesday night, a comedy night Wednesday, and more. You can discover more about CAB on their website located at www.utccab.org. The Communication Department hosted its third annual Photo Night Wednesday. The event was held in Fletcher Hall with about 100 people in attendance. Photo Night was originally scheduled for March 1st, but was postponed when severe storms closed UTC. Professional photojournalists were interviewed and given time to talk about significant photos they had made in their careers. Students' work was shown and photojournalists gave a short description of significant photos made in their career. If you're interested in taking photojournalism classes at UTC, they are each semester. For more information, ask your advisor. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. We are on the UTC TV channel housing 2.1. So tune in and have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.